important story behind that tune. When I started learning how to play old-time music, and I was taking lessons from the great Tom Sauber, at the same time there was an elder fiddler named Mel Durham. The contest stage is actually named after Mel Durham. Mel was born in 1914 and he had moved here just after World War II. He was a, an Illinois fiddler from a family of musicians. And uh, he played a lot of great tunes, family tunes. But there were a couple tunes that really, really stood out when I was learning and listening to Mel's music. And one of them was called Over the Mountain, and another tune was called Alonzo Janes. And this fiddle tune, both of them in fact, really, really mesmerized me. And Mel had said that this man named Alonzo James, who was enslaved as a child, he, he was a slave, born in 1850, that uh, he did work for, for the uh, Durham family, he was a cooper, he made barrels for them, and uh, he played fiddle, and he taught the family several fiddle tunes. And it was pretty amazing to me that I wasn't just playing an instrument, playing licks with my bow or my fingers, but I was part of a tradition. And that is really what old-time music boils down to, is we're part of this, this continuum. But in this particular case, I'm learning these tunes from this man, several generations older than me, who had learned some tunes from an ex-slave. And I've played and taught these tunes for years. And I've always wondered, what else is there to know about this man, Alonzo James? There was very little information, no photographs, nothing. And, and I figured that story would never develop. And one day, one of my students, who happens to be here, she's running the Instrument Petting Zoo, she's a genealogist, Cindy Richardson, she thought she had found descendants of Alonzo James and threw some feelers out. And I don't think we heard anything for about a year. And then we get this email and there was this emotional weekend, a very emotional weekend, where these descendants heard about what was happening. They heard that there were people playing his music. And there was this weekend of emails, and they were sending me photographs, and I was starting to learn about this man. It was all coming together over a decade after I had initially learned these tunes. And they've been an important part of me as a learner, and a very important part of me as a teacher. So I decided here at this festival to dedicate this stage to Alonzo James and the great artist and old-time musician Howard Raines based on a photograph of Alonzo James which is in your programs drew this up, designed the stage banner and as of today, this is officially the Alonzo Janes performance stage. And it's, it's really amazing how this, for me as a musician, how this, this whole story has come full circle in a way. But what really makes it extra special is several descendants of Alonzo Janes are here today. They have flown in from Oregon and uh, from Connecticut, and I'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Gerald Janes, who is visiting us from Connecticut. He's a professor at Yale University. Give him a hand. Good afternoon. And I certainly would like to thank David for keeping my great-grandfather's music going. Thank all of you for coming today. I will just tell you a few things that uh, David and others don't know, and you'll hear as well. 
But I'd first like to say, you can imagine the great elation and wonderment about the internet that overcame my relatives and me when we first got in touch with David. Uh, we all knew about Alonzo James. Playing the violin was a family tradition. Uh, his youngest son, David James, was a pretty uh, strong violinist himself. When I was seven years old, they put me on the instrument. Alas, I have a great ear, but no talent for the violin. So they merc mercifully uh, let me get off when I, after a couple years of agony, agony for pretty much everybody. My sister still moans about having to listen to me practice to this day. But Alonzo James, David uh, mentioned that he spent his last years in the state of Illinois where I was born. Alonzo lived in a place called Pontiac, Illinois. And my great aunt and uncle also lived there. And we used to go over there. I was born about 20 miles away. And my father used to take us over there every couple weeks or so. And in their parlor, there was a nice piano. And on that piano was a photograph uh, the photograph from which your, the brochure today comes from, and underneath it had just simple words, William Alonzo James, born a slave, Paris, Tennessee, 1850. And as a young boy, that always um, had an amazement for me, and I always started, that's when I first started thinking about slavery, when I first was able to read those words. And, but that's not what I want to talk about today. One of the things that I want to say is who taught Alonzo James to play the fiddle? Now it turns out that Paris, Tennessee is in, in between Union City, Tennessee and Dresden, Tennessee. And Dresden, Tennessee is the birthplace, I believe in 1853, of Blind Joe Mangrum, who was possibly one of the most famous fiddlers of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He was a um, regular uh, in the early days of the Grand Ole Opry. He played the Chicago Symphony and many other places. Well, one day William Alonzo James, who was a banjo player in his early youth, he was around nine or 10 years old, was in Dresden. He ran into Blind Joe and they became fast friends, taught each other their instruments. So um, William Alonzo learned his fiddle playing from Blind Joe Mangrum. If you don't know that name, you should look it up uh, when you get a chance on the internet. Um, the other thing about William I'd like to say, because I want you to hear the rest of this music, is that well, he was a slave, it was illegal to teach slaves to read. So he was freed at around age 11, but at 24, he started teaching himself to read. And then he married, and he married a woman who had been free, who was um, actually a half Muscogee Native American and a half Scotch-Irish, and she taught him to read. And he became a consummate reader. So, which is something I guess that fell in the genes, because uh, the two two of the adults who are here today from the family were both professors. Uh, but he taught himself, and he became a uh, locally well-known herbalist, and he was a he, which he learned from being a gardener, and he played uh, in his as he tells it. He played many great balls in Tennessee and Kentucky during his youth before he moved to Illinois in governor's mansions and uh, for the aristocracy of those states. Well, before I leave, I'd like to acknowledge my daughter, Hillary James, who should stand up in the back of the crowd, who actually is great-great-granddaughter who lives in Los Angeles. 
my cousin Matthew Johnson, who's come here from Eugene, Oregon, and his son Liam, who I should say is named Liam Alonzo Johnson. Right? So you can see that Alonzo James has played a particularly important uh, ongoing role in our family. We're still naming people after him, and we talk about him a lot. But anyway, thank you loads for being here today, and let's enjoy some more of this music. Let's hear one more tune from Alonzo James. Let's welcome Chris Berry and Susan Platts. Yeah. 